It's been said that crime is society's most pervasive disease. If so, there is an epidemic in America. When measured in terms of death, human suffering, and monetary costs, the crime epidemic far outweighs our most frightening contemporary diseases, including cancer and AIDS. Although reports on crime have long been headline news, the true complexity and magnitude of this national crisis is only now coming to public awareness. With increasing reports on prison overcrowding and court-ordered mandates to release prisoners, we are only now beginning to understand we cannot continue to simply lock away our criminal elements. The criminal justice system is severely strained as our human and monetary resources are far outweighed in relation to the size of the criminal crisis. But crime is not only a problem of the criminal justice system, it is a human problem, and left unchecked will threaten the very fabric of our society. This is not a doomsday report, this is about solutions, viable long-term solutions using new technologies to address this national crisis in entirely new ways. Across this country, in state after state, there is a severe shortage of adequate prison facilities. At the same time, new criminals are flooding into the system in record numbers. Prison conditions have become so critical that every facility in the United States presently houses more inmates than it was designed to hold. In fact, prisons in all but eight states are under federal court orders to reduce their populations, having ruled their conditions constitute cruel and unusual punishment. Building new prisons, however, is not a viable solution to the problem. At the present rapid rate of growth of the inmate population, it would be necessary to build the equivalent of two new prisons every week just to keep pace. At today's average construction cost, the bill to taxpayers would be a staggering $70 million a week. The crisis has created serious sentencing dilemmas for the judiciary. On average, convicted felons serve less than two and a half years. Those convicted of more serious violent crimes serve only 2.5 to four years. Even convicts with life sentences average less than six years of incarceration. Central, we're behind the course. License 175 and Nancy 032. remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Earlier research right by the Rand Corporation for the National Institute of Justice questioning. showed that fully two-thirds of a sample of felons on probation in California were re-arrested two and a half times within three years. Alarmingly, during that same period, each offender committed 25 new crimes. All right, get in the car. Probation staffs, overburdened with increasing caseloads of serious offenders, are often unable to provide adequate supervision to ensure public safety. This dilemma has sparked a search for new options. A number of correctional agencies are experimenting with intermediate sanctions, such as intensive community supervision, electronic monitoring, house arrest, and community service sentencing. The purpose of all sentences, either directly or indirectly, is simply to reduce crime. The criminal justice system has four objectives for offenders, which, if achieved, would provide the long-term solution to the present crisis. They are restraint, rehabilitation, restitution, and deterrence. The relative success of all alternative programs is in direct relation of their ability to achieve one or more of these objectives. There is a new system in the final stages of development which many experts believe will provide long-term viable solutions 
through advanced technologies. The system is called OPUS, an acronym for Offender Position Information Supervision. OPUS is specifically designed to provide for restraint, rehabilitation, restitution, and deterrence. OPUS is a new proprietary technology designed to monitor the position of criminal offenders on probation, parole, or other alternative applications. The system will keep thousands of offenders under intensive electronic positioning surveillance on a 24-hour basis over a 9,000 square mile area. Each offender can be sentenced to an unlimited variety of locations and times, providing the judiciary and correctional agencies with a spectrum of sanctions to match the spectrum of criminals. For instance, a hardened felon might be assigned to a very specific schedule as to every location where he is required to be along with the exact times he is to be there throughout the 24-hour period. Even his specific routes of travel to and from work or community service can be programmed into Opus computers. By contrast, a repeat alcohol offender may only be sentenced to AA meetings or counseling. Time, dates, and locations of the meetings are simply programmed at Opus Center, where computers monitor his compliance. If the offender deviates from his assigned daily schedule or area boundaries, an alarm is generated at the Opus Computer Center and his current electronically fixed location is flashed on the computerized map of the service area. Opus computers then automatically access the offender's data file, providing the Opus operator with complete information on the offender, including his name, address, probation or parole officer, criminal history, and terms and conditions of his sentence. All information is then modem to the appropriate agency, Opus operators can then provide tracking information so that the appropriate authority can apprehend the offender if desired. This is Opus Center. We are currently tracking a probationary offender who has violated the parameters of his probation. Opus addresses offender recidivism on the street where it counts. By maintaining a permanent data log of each offender's whereabouts on a 24-hour basis, an offender will be unable to successfully commit new offenses because his data log would place him at the scene of the crime. These logs can also be cross-referenced with daily crime reports. Similar in some ways to the cellular telephone system, Opus uses an array of antennas which are strategically located throughout a metropolitan area. When a unit transmits, these antennas not only receive the signals, but through proprietary technology, precisely calculate the distance between the transmitter and the receiving antenna. The Opus transmitter emits a digital identification radio signal on an average of once every 15 minutes. This information is then retransmitted to the Opus Center, where sophisticated software programs position and identify the transmitter on a large computerized map of the 9,000 square mile service area. Individual boundaries for each offender can be reprogrammed on a daily basis at the Central Computer Center. An Opus operator need only be notified by a parole or probation officer of changes in the offender's schedule. In this way, an offender can be monitored through flexible work schedules or job interviews. The offender wears a three ounce waterproof radio transmitter with its own onboard computer. The tamper-proof binding system provides immediate notification to OPA Center if the unit is tampered with. Each transmitter is assigned an individual code number corresponding to the offender's comprehensive data file. The entire system is designed for ongoing system reliability with fully redundant computer and power backup systems. More importantly, Opus does not rely on telephone or electrical power lines for locating offender units. The technology provides for offender rehabilitation, reform, and deterrence, as well as a system to allow for restitution to victims and society. Most importantly, it breaks the cycle of recidivism. Opus is the new technology that finally clears the path to achieve these four objectives. It is the alternative the judicial system has been searching for.